and Nellen's unwinding a bit, which is why she twisted. Patients will often try to help you and sometimes they'll roll straight over to your side and then they're missing that opportunity for that deep horizontal adduction, that pull through the chest structures, through the back structures. So if they're unwinding and it truly looks like they're softening into it and um, it's that natural self-corrective motion, great. If they're trying to help you, just encourage them to lay flat while they're doing that. And it looks like we're doing our unwinding demonstration now. <laughs> What you're seeing is the mind moving the body. I couldn't make this stuff up, stuff up if I wanted to. It's pretty amazing, right? But the body actually gives you clues as a therapist as to what you need. So if you see something like this happening, this says push me. Right? So we can apply a little bit of pressure and see what happens. The body is twisting or bending. We're just going along with it. We see the, the pressure shift and change. We're getting some extension we can just encourage that for example nothing should ever be forceful if someone ever actually does unwind on your table the first time that you're seeing this this can look really weird and really scary uh, it might even terrify the patient potentially too if they're moving in a way that they are not sure is safe the key is just to keep them safe right they'll never move themselves into a position where they can actually hurt themselves uh, and what that means ultimately is if it looks like they're getting close to the edge or they might fall, you tell them, listen, I just need you to get a little bit heavier in your body so that we can keep you safe. And there's this tendency, especially the first time someone ever unwinds, to want to be everywhere. I see a hand moving. I see a leg moving. What's best, honestly, for safety is to simply be where the center of the action is. So if I'm near her hip or her pelvis or I'm trying to you know, find that fulcrum that the body is twisting around, I can stay engaged at that focal point of motion. And then if there is a sudden shift or change, a leg comes flying, an arm comes flying, I can keep myself safe, right? That's the, that's the whole point too. I, I want to get out of this in one piece as well. Yep. So sorry, I mentioned that there was the push me. This is saying pull me. You're seeing a lot of reaching and elongation. So that says I'm going to pull on that. And then every once in a while, you'll see patterns that look more like effort, more like tension. So there's a little bit of this kind of almost like a fist starting. Sometimes you'll feel see it in the feet as looking like uh, some sort of compressive, like they're stepping into something. And that's the body saying, resist me. So that would be you creating a little bit of pressure. I'm just holding the fist here so that she can push into that. And you always want to let them win, but you just want to give them a little bit of resistance as well so that they can move through to whatever position in space they're trying to get to. Now in unwinding, there are two things that we want to look out for, especially when it comes to trauma healing. And that's what's called a still point or a freeze response. Right? So it, What's happening with the freeze response, it's that total tension, it's that moment of impact from a trauma. So for example, you think about the motor vehicle accident just before you strike and sympathetic uh, and parasympathetic systems are both saying, I don't know what the hell to do. They're both upregulated tremendously and the body just shuts down, the body freezes. And when sometimes during an unwinding, someone might go to that place where some sort of muscle memory for that trauma comes and you may see them shake, convulse, get a little bit agitated, their body becomes very stiff, very tight. The still point, it's almost like a dead zone. It's kind of like you're moving, 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 and then suddenly everything stops and you're like, where'd they go? They still see them held in the position they're in, but it's like no one's home. Um, and essentially this is subconscious mind has kind of gone off somewhere. It's gathering the information it needs from, from the fascial system, from the ether, from, you know, depending on your, your belief system, basically it's reorganizing and then it'll all, almost all at once kind of come back in and you'll start to see the body shift and move again. Justin, can you actually explain what unwinding means for our audience? Yeah, absolutely. So uh, unwinding is self-corrective motion. You think about sitting at a chair and you roll and twist and click and pop your body understands the positions and space it needs to be in to self-correct and heal. And as I was mentioning earlier in our talk, uh, it often gets thwarted in this response, either because we don't actually allow ourselves to fully process the motion that's going on, um, 
examples would be the inhibiting processes that we that we learn along the way because we don't want to look silly or in the way that we deal with trauma in our society a lot of it tends to happen at high velocity you think about a motor vehicle accident again the first thing they're going to do is strap you to a spinal board or you know put a neck collar on you you don't have the opportunity to shake and convulse and cry or you know, get upset and feel the emotions or the sensations of that moment of impact. Um, and then you are, you know, you're still feeling pain months later. Well, now you need an assessment from a psychologist and they're asking you to talk about your symptoms and sensation rather than feel your way through it. You're still stuck in that moment of impact, right? The idea is, can you allow the body to resolve some of those uh, moments in time, those fro frozen moments in time that are still being held in the fascial system? Hopefully that answered the question. If that still wasn't clear, let me know. All right. I'm going to wind down on that one. Somebody is asking oh, yeah. that although this will be client specific, approximately how long does unwinding last? That's a good question. Uh, you could theoretically unwind all day long. You know, you sit and, you know, maybe you feel yourself just gently move and roll in your chair. Um, ultimately, what you're looking for in a treatment is um, you're looking ideally for a moment where things get really quiet again as a, an opportunity to just kind of slowly, you know, wind down or let go of the body and let them sort of reorganize, sit up and whatever they need to do. With that said, you can abruptly stop an unwinding without hurting the person but what will likely happen is that they're going to be stirred up right they may feel a little bit emotionally agitated or uncomfortable and they might you know complain about it a little bit later um you know this is where it's very beneficial to let someone know if um, you're familiar with the concept of a healing crisis that idea that sometimes you feel worse before you feel better um you know they can treat with heat or ice at home um, you can, you know, take a warm bath that helps that kind of thing. But ultimately, sometimes we just have to feel that agitation, that grossness. Um, and that does sometimes come up even if you do let the body eventually come to a quiet space where you'll feel stirred up. And it can come hours later, even a few days later. Um, but usually if it is going to happen, it's in that first like eight to eight hours to 24 hours. And then um, Nellen was, uh, you know, talking to me, don't, don't forget to, to mention the morning stretches, right? So this is, you know, we want to give you some value as well. This is absolutely something, as I mentioned, you probably do all the time at your desk. You're not even thinking about it. Oh, it feels great. Uh, but you can do this as self-care in your own bed at home, right? So first thing in the morning before you jump out of bed tomorrow, and, uh, what you can do is simply become aware of the weight of your body in the bed, you know, the feeling of the sheets on your skin. Let yourself just start with something simple. You stretch outwards with your fingers or stretch your toes. And then you play around with the angles. Try, you know, twisting the forearm inwards or outwards, making a little bare paw with your hands. You know, you can try compressing, reaching, and just see where the body takes you. There, are, Chances are good. You'll find an angle that feels great. And then you just go for the ride. And I challenge you to try and do this continuously for a good five minutes or so, right? And what's the worst case scenario? Maybe your partner wonders what the hell you're doing or you... You know, you feel silly. You know, no one's ever been killed by feeling silly. Uh, but it, it's amazing what you, how great and how fluid your body will feel. And then you can you know, take that, you know, throughout the day at your desk too. And you're going to feel pretty awesome by the end of your workday. So is unwinding the goal? Is this where we're trying to get to? Or does it happen to most people or some? Uh, unwinding is part of the triad. It's not the goal ultimately. The goal is always functional mobility it's the strength and range of motion goals it's the patient's goals right uh, ideally you're creating goals that have value to the patient and they're anchored in their key values so you know rather than saying you know if a patient tells you i want to be out of pain it's kind of a crummy goal because pain is relative it changes day to day and and if they do suddenly feel pain because they did more because you've been helping them feel better they will may perceive that as them taking a step backwards because they may not necessarily see the forest for the trees so make sure that they're aware you know, like I want to be able to get on the floor to play with my grandkids or something like that, right? Something that has value. And then your goal is their goal as well. You're, I'm, for example, not just working on this hip flexor because I'm working on this hip flexor because Nellen is expressing that she's having some back pain. And, you know, I, John says the, uh, this jokingly in courses, but it is true. This is the front of the back right? The hip flexors are an anti-gravity muscle. And by working through here, I'm helping to unload the spine, right? So by working through the hip flexor, my goal is improve mobility in the spine, and then I can reassess. And if I happen to be doing that hip flexor release and Nellen unwinds, 
great. Not only is she getting a fantastic release locally in the hip flexor region, but now that tension that that might have been linked to in the shoulder or neck or the diaphragm, which has some close relationships with the, the, with the hip flexor, is correcting too. So hey, that's one less thing I have to do in terms of a structural release. And I can check it off my list of things that I was worried about making sure that I did that treatment session, right? So the goal itself is not unwinding. Unwinding is something that can happen. And when it happens, we're just supporting it uh, to help the body heal and self-correct more thoroughly than we might have been able to do with just structural release on its own. Yeah, so Nellie made a great point. Um, patients have varying degrees of comfort with feeling into their bodies. And when sometimes it's important just to give permission, right? So in the first appointment, you might say like, you may feel your body uh, start to move or shift a little bit. You might feel sensation beyond where you're. I'm currently working. Having that permission um, may be the catalyst to allow them to move right away if they were feeling something going on. Uh, or it might be something that comes on very slowly. Uh, unwinding can be big or it can be incredibly small and subtle. They, You might not see anything happen, but then you say, how did that feel? What did you notice? And they might describe seeing colors or, you know, you, you know, I felt this serpentine motion in my spine. It felt like my entire spine unraveled. You know, like these are things that some of your patients, I'm sure, have described to you with some of the techniques you're already doing, right? The, the fact is patients unwind all the time. You unwind all the time. You just may not necessarily realize that's what you were doing, right? But this is the language of the body. So the more you can connect with that, the better.